Hey, Shantae, yes. how are you? Hi, I am wonderful. Thank you. How are good, you? Good, good. Well, thank you for joining us. So this is Shantae mm -hmm. Allen. She is running for Glen Heights City Council. Yes. Um, what, place five, district five? I am place five. We are at large. It's only 12,000 people here, so it's for the whole district. Good, good, good. So tell me about the campaign and where is Glen Heights? So Glen Heights is south of DeSoto. We are off of Bear Creek and I-35 on the way to Waxahachie, or Waxahachie as everybody's been saying. Um, so we are nestled right in between uh, DeSoto and Waxahachie. And then how close are you to downtown Dallas? <sighs> well, depending on traffic and car wrecks, about 40 minutes. <laughs> okay, okay, good. So tell me about the race and uh, why are you running for this seat? So I am running for city council because first and foremost, I am a community activist. And as a community activist, I have been volunteering my entire life. And some things happened in 2015 where I was able to go to a rally in New York City with the death of Eric Garner and Reverend Al Sharpton was there with his group, National Action Network. NAACP was there, Urban League was there, and they had a panel of mothers whose son had been shot by police officers. And so with the panel, they talked about how it's important that we're no longer just out protesting, walking the streets, we're um, telling our disgust on Facebook, but we need to be in office. We need to be the ones who are making changes in our community using pen and paper. And I took that call to action. I say, you know, I'm always volunteering. I'm always always somewhere. It's so important that because I am a teacher, I'm out with my students all the time, I'm out in the community, I can be one of those people who's making the changes because I don't have an agenda to whereas I'm trying to be some big politician. I really am for the people. And so that's why it's important to me. Good stuff. So tell me about um, what are some of the issues and things going on in the city of Glen Heights? So there are a couple different issues. Right now, what I'm hearing from the residents is that the city itself is just old fashioned and it needs to be updated. So the cities that are around us, Lancaster, we have DeSoto, we have Red Oak, they are booming in terms of their economy. They have a ton of restaurants going up all the time. Uh, there are a lot of different activities for the youth, for the seniors, and we're just kind of stuck. And so, um, even with the roads, the sidewalk, the modern, the infrastructure needs to be modernized. And so the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we get input from the citizens to see what it is that they want. Um, so we know that the veterans want some things. We know the, the seniors want some things. We know the, the youth want some things. And so uh, we, we have more than enough money in the budget. We can get these things done. I think there's just a complacency with the current city government to whereas they are old fashioned in, in terms of, oh, well, you know, what we have now is good enough. We don't need to do anything different. But you have people who are complaining, but the government doesn't hear those people complaining because they're not really out in the streets listening to them complain. And so as I'm knocking on doors, as you know, they sort of tell all right then and there. And so um, that's what I would like to do is have a forum to see what it is that they really want. So tell me a little bit about your background. You said activists involved in community, what kind of things you're involved in and uh, professionally, what do you do? So as far as my career, I am a teacher. I've been a teacher for 15 years and I'm, I'm a reading, writing English teacher. And so with that, um, I, ironically, when I first started teaching, I wasn't given a curriculum. And so I had to go out and find my own books. I had to find my own material. And so what I wanted to do was take what I had been doing with my volunteerism and incorporate it into my classes. And so what came out of that is that I have sort of a social justice curriculum. And so what I typically do is with teaching the regular information that I have to teach, I also try to challenge my students to do more within their lives. So you're not just here taking a college course. What can you do in the world? So um, so like right now, we're talking about voting, why they should vote, uh, where did they go to vote? 
Um, and my students asked me, they said, well, everybody keeps telling us to vote, but who are we voting for? And so that's a discussion that we're having. Um, the Confederate statues, that's a, a discussion that we're having. DACA, we are talking about all of those things so that they can understand because when you're living sort of in a small town or a bubble, you don't see the world for what it really is. And, and you need to know those things. So other than that, personally, I live in Glen Heights. I'm from Oak Cliff. I graduated from W.W. Samuel High School. Um, I like to travel. I've traveled often. I um, volunteered and was a member of Urban League where I met you. Hi. I've been a member of NAACP and um, just really all over just trying to see how I can use my life to change the world. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And then where do you teach? Someone asked that question. And I know you can't see the questions on your side, so I'll repeat them for you. Where do you teach? Oh, I currently teach at Tyler Junior College. And before that, I was in New York for two years. And then before that, I worked at Cedar Valley College for seven years, where I was a department chair for reading. And I was in Dallas County Community Colleges for 10 years. So before Cedar Valley, I worked at Richland College and also worked at Eastfield College. Okay, good. And then also you, you kind of glossed over education credentials and I'm only sharing it because I know you are well credentialed. Oh, I'm sorry. Educated. Yes, so yes, what, yes. Um, so <laughs> My bachelor's is in literary studies. My master's is in secondary education. And then uh, with public school, you have these additional certifications. So I am certified to teach English language arts, which is fourth grade through 12th grade. I'm also certified for ESL, which is fourth grade through 12th grade. And I also have a special ed certification that's localized. Got it. Okay. So tell me um, some of the things you plan to implement once elected to the Glen Heights City Council. Well, the first thing I plan to implement is to have a community forum. <clears throat> what I would like to do is get an, a handful of citizens that are diverse in terms of age, um, in terms of culture, in terms of the way they think. We um, unfortunately just had a situation with our mayor being removed. And so uh, what I would like to do is have their thoughts on what type of mayor are they looking for next? And with the mayor that they're looking for next, how can that mayor help us to move the city forward? Because that's what we need. And, and my fear is that we're going to have people who want to run just so that they can run and they don't really care about the city. So that's the first thing. And then once we have that taken care of, like I said, I would like to move forward with the infrastructure. Um, we have a ton of land here in Glen Heights. And so I think we need to do a better job in actually recruiting businesses to come to our city. These lots have been vacant for as long as I've lived here and that's over eight years. And so I would like to make sure that we put a team together and we actually go out and scout businesses because those businesses will help bring in new tax revenue. And so my goal is if we can get tax revenue from those businesses, we can help relieve our residents of having to constantly tax them. That also uh, is one of my other points in terms of some relief for working families. Uh, I know DeSoto and some of the other local cities have like little scholarships for beautification and things like that where you can apply for grants and you can spruce up your yard or do some kind of home improvement and so I would like to implement that as well. Got it, got it, got it. And uh, so I think you guys have uh, more than one seat that's open, right? There's a couple of seats that are happening. I only see because there's a lot of yard signs uh, at that part of town. You have a yes. couple of seats that are open, just one? We have one, three, and five that are running right now. Got it. And then um, how many candidates in each? You know, I, I think there are only 10 now. In place one, there are about five. Uh, some people dropped out along the way. Um, place two, there are currently two active. And then in place five, which is mine, there are three of us. One is an incumbent. Got it. Okay. And then tell me about, uh, you've been knocking on doors, I assume. So how's the feedback been when you've been knocking on doors? Uh, it seemed like a good turnout. And, uh, and also share with us a little bit about your, uh, your, your plan of how they can get more involved in the campaign this weekend. 
Okay. So we have been knocking on doors. We have probably knocked on close to a thousand doors. I have some really good volunteers and we started in August. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't knock on as many doors as we like to because it has been uh, just about a thunderstorm every single weekend. Um, and I did not have an arc to go around my neighborhood. So we just had to stay yeah. in. Um, the doors are great. So of course, about half the people aren't there. So we just leave the card. But for the people who are there, they seem to be really engaged. Um, some of them are concerned about a few of the same issues over and over again. And so what I like to encourage them to do to get more involved is to like my Facebook page and leave a comment. And I always tell them to leave a comment, whether it's good or bad about the city, so that we know. Because when I spoke to our city manager and I brought some of these concerns to him, he was not aware at all. And that's just yeah. one of those issues that government is disconnected from the people. And so the government will say, of course, well, it's up to the people to come to the city council meeting. And then the people say, well, I work. sides at the same time. So knocking on doors has been a great experience. I've learned so much more about the city because a lot of the residents here have been here for decades. They were here when the city first started or their, their parents were here, things like that. Um, we have done a lot. We've hit pretty much the whole community um, from the so gas the station I mean, down to the uh, How many you knocked on, but how, how many people are voting in these elections? Well, the interesting thing, as you know, this is the, the biggest turnout um, that we've had in a long time. So as I did my research in the beginning, I want to say the largest turnout we had ever had was about 400. The regular turnout here in Glen Heights is around 150. Well, as of, fri let's see, as of Friday, we've had almost 1,700 voters. Woo! Look at Glen Heights! Friday. In Glen Heights. And these are Glen Heights voters. These are not, you know, Red Oak, Oak Villa, yeah. um, DeSoto. These are Glen Heights voters. So I am really excited about that. And I, I like to believe that I had a small part in that because we did send out phone calls. And so when people were coming to the polls, they say, hey, I got your call the other day. Thanks for reminding me. Or when we knock on doors, oh, you're the only person who's knocked on my door. I, you know, thank you for letting me know. Oh, I didn't know there was an election. Who's running? Why are you running? You know, of course, those types of <laughs> questions. And so it's always great. And so we're just continuing to get out in the community to let people know that, hey, I am running and I'm on your side. I want to be a voice for the people. And then one more thing, one of the cool things or uh, one of the long-term planning things about what you guys have, and I'm not sure if you know much about the DART station um, there, but uh, the city of Glen Heights has uh, a DART park and ride. Is that yes. what you guys have there? Um, yes. How is that impacting community or as uh, far as tax base or do you hear much about it? Is there use of it? How does that work for you guys? So I am aware and the, the mayor, the ex-mayor has talked about that in, in our um, meet the mayor meetings. And so uh, it is something that he's very proud of the project because here in the best Southwest area, we are the only city that has that. And so uh, it's full all the time. People come Isn't from it? all around the cities um, to utilize it. Uh, I think the pro, of course, is that you get to ride share. I think the con is that it goes straight downtown. There are no other stops. And so um, one of the issues that we've been talking about a little bit, and I know with DeSoto, with you all having Star Transit, is that in communities like this where you have um, wealthier suburbs, it, people are under the impression that you don't need mass transit. But then you have younger people and you have senior citizens who do need that help because they are stuck at home when the, the sort of bread earn, the breadwinner is at work. And so um, 
what I would like to do actually is uh, get a forum together for that because we have something similar to Star Transit here that a lot of people don't know about. We have a DART on call. And so it's a little shuttle bus. You have to call them a, an hour ahead of time and they'll take you anywhere in the city of Glen Heights. Um, if you wanna get a ride to the DART park and ride, you can do that. But um, I've called them myself twice this summer. Yeah. And the I did, I would like to, um, to ride it, to learn more about it. But the lady who I spoke to um, gave me information that's different than what's on their website. So I do plan to research that a little bit more so that our citizens can um, get that information and utilize it because otherwise it is just sitting there. Got it. No, definitely. I think, you know, uh, like you said, all the other cities in the best Southwest does not have mass transit. Since we don't have that, that is an asset that your city has. Yeah. And uh, I always wondered about utilization and, uh, you know, we're talking about how to get to downtown Dallas. We're a suburb of mm -hmm. Dallas. So how do we get there mm -hmm. the quickest? And I know a few people that, you know, live in DeSoto drive to Glen Heights to park so they can ride right. um, that dark back to downtown Dallas. So with that, Shantae, I want to tell you thank you uh, for running. Uh, I, I, you know, we go back. Um, but I know your heart for service. I know you're serious about community. Probably one of the most educated of all my friends because you're just so well versed in all of that. And I, oh, I just want to tell you, thank you for running uh, because you, you know, we need good people in office. We need people who care about community. We need people who are well thoroughly researched. You know, one of the first things of being on city council is it's a lot of moving trains already, and it's hard to yes. make changes um, if you aren't just adept to keeping up on what's already been going on and being able to research Absolutely. and dig a little bit. So I just want to tell you, thank you again. And thank you for putting your name on the ballot. It's not easy <laughs> to run for office. And, you know, everyone <laughs> has ideas about what they should do. Uh, but the difference is stepping up, especially for some of these unpaid positions that, yes. you know, volunteer like um, these city council seats that we run for. So I want to say thank you. And I'll give you the last 10 seconds to give your pitch of why they should come out and support you and vote for you on November 6th. Yes. So again, my name is Shante Allen. I'm running for city council place five here in Glen Heights. You should vote for me because it is a vote in the right step for the entire community. I am well versed in what's happening with the city because I attend the city meetings. I attend the events. I just had somebody yesterday say, hey, I saw you at the national night out. What you don't see with my opponents is that they don't show up. And so if they're not showing up just to see you in a regular event, they probably don't care what it is that you're doing throughout the year. You want somebody who is on your side and who can be a voice for you, who's open, who, who you can talk to, and who you can really believe that will make the changes for you. And I am that person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shantae.